Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The three-country, three-day whistle-stop press tour to promote the upcoming rematch between Andy Ruiz Jr. and Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia on December 7th has come to a close. The final leg was in London, so what I'll do is I'll get to a quick montage little wrap-up of uh, the different respective speakers, including the fighters themselves, and then on to a few thoughts, because it's good now that this press tour has concluded included i think maybe it was a little bit overdone three days maybe we could have just done with one but uh i'll get to that there's no heavyweight champion that's gone before that hasn't been beaten um everybody has a bad night everybody fights a fighter who's on form where they're not on form that night but here's the beauty of it it can be put right and it can be put right in spectacular fashion both are dynamic um anthony has the height and reach which he'll use but it's difficult for fighters. It's difficult to have a change of opponent that late in the camp. It's not an excuse. It's just the reality, motivation. Oh, just trying to get it out of the way rather than, you know, it means the world to me to box, you know, Miller at the time and, you know, what went on at the press conference stuff. So it's all been a learning experience, a huge one for Anthony. You know, it, it didn't come as a surprise to me. I've been following Anthony Joshua for a very long time. I, I admire Anthony Joshua. He's a great fighter. He's even a better person. But, uh, you know, Andy was a better fighter that night. And we're going to go back and we're going to plan to do, it, do the same thing again. You know, we're, we're going to have a lot more time in our hands to prepare as we have now. And uh, we're going to come in with a better game plan, better sparring, uh, a better situation. You couldn't ask for a better situation than now. You only have five weeks to prepare for, for the first fight now. You know, I mean, we count well, the time we have now, probably about 13 weeks or so. We can't kind of overlook Andy and his talents and his success in the ring because I'm fighting the best out there right now. And right now, in my opinion, Andy Ruiz is the best heavyweight out there. When the opportunity was, was uh, presented, I didn't want to kind of go around different heavyweights and look for kind of warm-up fights and stuff like that, which there was an option to. And everyone in the, in the division was telling me, oh man, you should have some warm-up fights. Why are you rushing back into it? And when I say not cut from the same cloth, it's not to disrespect anyone, but it's just that your opinion is different from my life and what I decide to do with it. And uh, that's what I mean cut from different cloths, is that I know what I want to do and I'm like, believing in myself and that instinct is what's brought me through boxing. And I don't want to change that. It has been a long weekend going here to there, but um, of course I'm ready for December 7th. I know AG wants to get the belts back, they're mine, but you know, all this hard work and dedication that I've been doing all my life, and I know he's been doing for all this, you know, but December 7th, we're going to win the same fashion. I think the, the main thing is believing and doing what you love and something that you want to accomplish and you you sacrifice, so that's what it's all about, it's about sacrificing and giving it all you got. I've been doing this since I was six years old. My first amateur, I was seven years old. This is the only thing that I know like to do, besides working with my dad in the construction and being in the sun, I don't wanna do that shit. I feel Anthony's trying to take my uh, my kids' Cheerios, you know? So um, that's why it gives me the extra motivation. So the, truth, the, only, the only motivation that I have right now is with my kids and my loved ones, so. Um, if someone's trying to take that away from me, um, I'm going to die trying not to. Andy Ruiz Jr. concluding that little montage. And it's got to be said, from watching the entire press conference, Andy Ruiz Jr. looked absolutely shattered, certainly faded and jaded after quite a few miles in the air over the last few days. And Joshua, actually, I actually thought of the three events, the three press conferences, he looked the most relaxed, the freshest he'd been off the three. He looked more at home, being in his home country. And maybe some of that was also because he realized he didn't really 
really have to do too much more travel. He could actually just sort of uh, leave in a car, go to wherever his home is, start training camp, and actually his sort of travel was over. Whereas Andy Ruiz Jr., after all those miles in the air over recent days, Saudi Arabia to New York, then to London, and then he's going to have to travel back to the United States, he probably knew that he had another leg to go, and he certainly did look a bit shattered there. And I've actually made no secret that I think these events overall, this um, press conference tour, which was crammed into three days, three countries, a lot of travel, uh, I think it's been a bit subpar on the entertainment front, you know, for a fight that's supposedly the biggest of the year. Very little energy from either fighters overall. There was very little entertainment value. In my last video, there were actually a couple of comments saying, well, what do you expect after these long plane rides? But that's an issue about scheduling. And if it did impact how the way that the fighters came across and what they said and how they sort of were perceived by fans, that's an issue for the organisers and they probably shouldn't have had such a gruelling travel schedule. And another comment that came up a few times, well, this fight sells itself. Which, of course, if you're a boxing fan, you know, you're going to buy it. You don't need any convincing. These press conferences, these press tours, you know, this press tour wasn't aimed at you. They know that you're going to watch this fight anyway because you're a hardcore boxing fan. But the whole sort of comment about this fight doesn't need any selling. Well, why did they need to have three press conferences then? I mean, unfortunately for boxing, it's a fringe sport to some extent in most parts of the world. Even in the United States, it's nowhere near the prominence that it used to have. You actually have to, for these big fights, you still need to work hard to create some buzz, get casual fans invested to buy the fight. And the fact that this fight is going to be in Saudi Arabia, there is going to be an element of out of sight, out of mind. And while the broadcast will be at a decent time in the United Kingdom, the fact that it's not going to be in the United Kingdom is going to impact the pay-per-view to some extent. That's just what happens. We saw, you know, a bigger version of that happen when Joshua and Ruiz fought the first time. The pay-per-view figures for the United Kingdom was just over 400,000. Previously, the lowest sort of pay-per-view numbers that Joshua had registered in the UK were for the Pavetkin and also Takam fights, but that was well more than double what was registered for the Ruiz fight. So the fight happening elsewhere does impact what happens even in the United Kingdom. Maybe it won't be as bad for this one because the, the time difference lines up a bit better, but it still is not in the UK. There will be an element of out of sight, out of mind. But just getting back to the, the press conferences and the, the rationale and the reasoning and the sort of the lack of oomph for it. I mean, uh, given we saw three iterations of the same press conference, you really could have just got away with one. And I don't think fans would have complained about it. But this wasn't about hardcore boxing fans. This was realistically about the respective broadcasters like DAZN and Sky who've missed out on having the actual fight in their preferred destinations of either the United States or the United Kingdom. It's about them being able to get their pound of flesh because they want to try, you know, make the best of the situation, not having it where they wanted it to try get their money's worth because they're investing big money into this through rights fees or, you know, putting the broadcast on. It's about trying to turn a pound note here and if step back and ask yourself was there anything about this press tour that helped build the fight bigger than it already is arguably no in a couple of weeks it will be a distant memory and it will be hard to remember a memorable moment from this press tour but this whole narrative of oh this fight sells itself well clearly not because they're going to have to push it to get people interested but hey you don't have to agree with me I just felt that this all fell a little flat and it was a missed opportunity. And let me be clear, because some people think that, you know, this has to be about trash talk. And I'm not talking about these guys having to have done trash talk to each other because we know that's not their wheelhouse. But for the most part, there was a distinct lack of intensity, a lack of a rivalry. And it was all just running through the motions. Not what I would have thought you would want for a fight that Eddie Hearn says is the biggest of the year. And just before I go, the gloves are off has been filmed, photos have emerged on social media, and if the press tour is anything to go by, I think we can expect that this is going to be a very sedate, a very pedestrian watch with very little fireworks. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Drop a comment, loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.